Okay, year six, history of still space and well. And staying indoors as much as we can. I think we're on chapter 11. I think Miss Carvate did chapter 10 of our book, Belinda and I. I think now we're on chapter 11, which is called Margins of Error. Okay, chapter 11. <clears throat> Minutes later, in the living room, the atmosphere was hot and close. Everyone was polite, everybody was calm, but you could have cut the atmosphere with a knife. That's what people say when invisible feelings vibrate in the air, like ions do just before an electric storm. Mum and Aunt Gloria were on the sofa. Aunt Gloria held a glass of brandy. Dad was standing, leaning back against the wall near the door. Cat and I stood beside him. The man, a detective sergeant, took notes, seated at the table. His boss, the woman, had taken another chair and was sitting in the middle of the room. She was thin and short with a blue skirt and jacket and a white blouse and her eyes moved quickly around the room like lightning strikes. First she said she was Detective Inspector Pierce and was in charge of finding Sullen. Then she asked questions. Who everyone in the family was, why Aunt Gloria was visiting and why she planned to move to New York. Then she asked to see the contents of Sullen's backpack. She took his things out one by one. I looked on carefully because in good detective stories, what people leave behind and don't leave behind can be a clue to where they have gone. There was a spare sweater, a pair of jeans, a pair of socks, underwear, pyjamas, another sweatshirt and a tiny towel. He didn't tell me very much. Then there was a battered paperback entitled Murder at 12,000 Feet, a guidebook to New York, brand new with new creases and a tiny address book. Finally, there was a Swiss Army knife and a key ring with a model of the Eiffel Tower on it but no keys. There were no wash things like a toothbrush because these were still in the bathroom. I remembered on the shelf over the basin. Detective Inspector Pierce held up the empty key ring with her eyes squinched up. Aunt Gloria explained that Salim had brought the key ring back from a school trip to Paris. Then that she had rented out her house in Manchester and given all but her own set of keys to the tenants. At present, she said, Salim had no keys to anywhere. There was silence. Then the inspector looked over to where Kat and I were standing. You two were the last to see Sally, I understand, she said. Kat told her in a quiet voice, not like her normal voice, all about the strange man, the free ticket, tracking the pod and waiting for Sally to come down, and how he hadn't. We should never have left them to get the tickets on their own, Mum said when Kat finished. Inspector's hand waved through the air. What this meant, I do not know. Then she turned back to Kat. You say you tracked the pod? Kat nodded. For half an hour, you did nothing but stare up and watch London Eye go round. Well, Kat considered. We walked back so as to be able to see better. If you're too close, you can't see the pods go round properly without getting them muddled. And we chatted a bit. Without getting them muddled, Inspector Pierce repeated. She interlocked her hands and rested her chin on them. We chatted a bit. You don't have to believe us. It's not a question of believing or disbelieving. But we tracked it. We did. We're sure, aren't we, Ted? Hmm, I said, sure, a hundred percent, no cat. Cat's eyes and lips scrunched up. Sure, 98 percent, yes, I said. The inspector looked at me without saying anything. The corners of her lips turned up, which meant she was slightly amused. Then she tapped her nose with her interlocked fingers. So, she said, you'd allow for a margin of error. Only a small one, I said, two percent. Two percent? In every human observation, I explained, there is a margin of error. This is because our senses are not foolproof. In fact, some people believe that 100% certainty is impossible to achieve. I stopped and put my head on one side. As humans, we cannot even be sure that the sun will rise the next day. Our assumption that it will do so is arrived at by a process of induction. This is a process where a probability based on past observation allows us to predict things like weather patterns. I've had enough of this, and Gloria interrupted. Sunrise, sunset, up and down the wheel, tracking pods, this is not fun fair. This is about my son, my only son. He's missing. What I want to know is, what's being done about it? We're doing all we can, Inspector Pierce said. She unlocked her fingers and smoothed her skirt. I know you're fretting. Fretting? You make it sound as if I've lost a handbag. It's early days. He's only been missing a few hours. In the vast majority of cases, young people who disappear like Salim are found within 48 hours. 48 hours? We'll miss our flight to New York. 48 hours, but usually sooner. But from the word go, we take the disappearance of minors very seriously. That's why I'm here. He's not a minor, he's my boy. 
Mum put an arm around her. Close, she whispered. We're doing everything possible, Inspector Pierce repeated. Such as? Dad said quietly. Everyone turned to look at him. The inspector sighed. We've begun checking the CCTV footage of the pods. No camera can see anything or anybody, but there's no sign of anything untoward happening that morning. Just the normal shots of normal tourists enjoying the view. We've also been taking statements from other people who raised the eye at that time. Unfortunately, the numbers run to 300 plus. We can only check the ones who paid by credit card. We've no way of checking those who paid cash. But again, so far, nobody remembers a boy matching your son's description. We've also checked hospital admissions and Gloria's eyes went round and large at the word hospital, but nothing. Perhaps he's still just lost, said Dad. That's indeed the likeliest explanation, Inspector Pierce said. There was a pause. Perhaps everyone was doing what I was imagining where lost was. I pictured Salim lost on London's underground system, getting on and off trains, wandering down passengers, passages, not sure if he should be on a north or southbound train, confused by the colours, not knowing that black stood for the northern line, our line. I was thinking how if I'd sat next to him on the tube earlier in the day instead of cat, I could have explained all about the London Underground map, being topological and how you are meant to read it, and then Salim would have found his way home with no problem, and perhaps he would be here now. We need some more personal details, Inspector Pierce said. She leaned towards Aunt Gloria. I'd like to ask you some private questions. Mum got up. Let's leave, she said to the rest of us. Dad opened the living room door, leading Cat out by the elbow, but Aunt Gloria grabbed Mum by the hand. You stay, Faith. I need you, please. Mum sat down again. She stared over at me as I waited to see if Aunt Gloria would need me too. Mum mouthed something, but no sound came out. It was as if she thought I was deaf and dumb, unable to lip-read. I blinked. Then she said the word out loud. Sweet. That was the second time that day Mum had told me to go away. I shuffled out after Dad and Cat and went into the kitchen with my hand flapping. Dad closed the kitchen door behind me. The police would find out more than I would and it wasn't fair. A heavy feeling like you, you get when you eat more calories than you could burn off efficiently came down inside of me. Cat had her face pressed against the fridge freezer. A tear trickled down her cheek and she was punching the side of her head with her fist. This meant she had the same feeling. It was called frustration extreme. And that's the end of chapter 11. Chapter 12 is called Another Fine Mess. And I think it will be Mr. Dunn reading that chapter. I hope you're enjoying this book. I love this book. And we will read some more during the week. Um, I think we're going to be doing some more cooking videos as well at some stage. I'm trying to convince Eva to make her banana bread because she makes lovely banana bread. And it's, re it's really, really easy to make. So if I can convince her to make her her lovely banana bread i will film it and we will put it on our youtube channel in the meantime all stay safe and well stay indoors as much as you can and i will speak to you soon take care everybody bye